Hello everyone. Uh, today I, I want to share how I made the effect on this leaf. Um, it's a, from a dye by Impression Obsession. It has a bunch of different leaves and they've all got some veining which embosses onto the die cut. Um, I used gilding flakes to start with um, because it gives a variety of texture. Um, it's on linen card and I use this one. It's from Indigo Blue and it's a mix called Lancashire Rose, which is in fact just copper and gold. But those colours, although I felt they were great for the background of um, an autumn leaf, I thought it would be nice to add some colour. I have done a, a video already how I added some green to this mix but then I thought for this card I'd like to add some other colours and I came into a bit of a problem in that the way I added colour was just to dab the die cut onto the ink pad but when I went to the second colour because this is a shiny surface obviously the ink hadn't dried and there was a tendency for the one ink to um, mess up the next ink pad, to contaminate it, to put, leave some of its colour, transfer it. So I came up with a plan for that. So I'm just going to get on and show how I actually made the whole card. I'm not going to assemble it all because I'm just going to show different elements. I won't be able to assemble it because the leaf will take time to dry with this uh, method that I use. Okie dokie. Let's start with the leaf that I can put it on one side. Here is my die. Here I've got a little piece of double sided sheet which I'm going to put onto a scrap of card very carefully. It'll be a bit over the edge, so I'm going to have to cut that off. This is a piece of um, Stick It um, double-sided sheet. And there we go. Put that bit on there. Now, I'm going to make sure that it's stuck all the way down because this is what I'm going to attach my gilding flakes to. I'll just put the card out of the way for a moment. I could give this a little rub with a... A brayer, just to make sure that all that adhesive is sticking to the card. Okay, now I will take off the sheet. Carefully. Feels really stuck actually. There we are, put that in a bit. Now I'm going to add some of these mega flakes. It calls them mega because they are actually huge. Lots of these, if you look at this, it's like a great wodge, all joined together. And this, this pot, every time I use it, it seems like there's more left than I started with because it's so, so concentrated, so you get a whole lot oh, in the look at it absolutely loads i'm going to put some of each color just spread them around a little bit i've used this for quite a few things and it's full to bursting every single time put a bit more put a bit more copper there we go The larger flakes that you put onto um, a piece of sheet like this, this it seems to be the shinier it gets because as um, you blend the gilding flakes onto your surface, whatever it might be, um, some of them get crushed and the small fragments obviously can't reflect as highly as the big pieces. I think that's going to be enough in there. Just put the lid back on. 
Now with my scoochie, I'm just going to tamp it down and then spread it over the whole area. So lovely, look at it. There we go. Missed a tiny bit there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be die cutting some of this. So I don't have to make any remedial efforts to fill in that little tiny bit. Okay. Now, next thing is to die cut this. I'm going to pop my uh, die onto the gilding and just put it through my die cutting machine. Okay. A good thing to do is to, when any time you're using gilding flakes, no matter what medium you've used to attach them to your card, just check that they're not tacky. Because if they are, they're going to either stick to your die, or if you're going to put them in an embossing folder, may stick to your embossing folder. So just check that they are absolutely um, free from any evidence of glue. And if you do think they're a little tacky, use an embossing buddy, a bag or a brush, whatever you have, just to make sure that it's not sticky anymore. Right, here's my leaf, my chestnut leaf. It looks lovely, but it's not really autumnal. If you look at the two together, you may want this kind of effect, but for my card this time, I wanted a real rusticy feel. So I started to add some colour. And the way I added the colour was with Distress Oxide. So I'm going to put a little bit on. Now, my cunning, <laughs> my cunning plan for not contaminating one pad by the one I've just used is to do this. I'm just going to put a dab of ink on my mat and just put my leaf through it. So I'll get some bits, bits of brown. Okay. I'm now going to wipe that up. Get a wet wipe and wipe it off. Okay. Next colour, I have a bit of mustard seed. That one was vintage photo, the one I just used. Now some yellow. Let's have a bit of yellow. Doesn't matter how you put it on, really. Just a splodge will be fine. Now, this is the effect that would have happened on my ink pad if I had tried to put yellow on after the brown. The yellow pad would have picked up some of the brown ink and that's what I didn't want to happen. So this is why I'm doing it from my mat. That will do for that one. Let me give this a wipe. Love to work on a glass mat, it's just so easy. Now a little rustic wilderness. I should put some rustic around the edge of that one, on this little one here. It does get your fingers messy, I have to say. You may want to wear gloves, which is great. I, I don't get on terribly well wearing gloves, but um, it does save your fingers. However, if you do happen to get inky fingers and you have to go out in fine company, <laughs> I found that if I put a little toothpaste onto a nail brush, just have a little scrub, they come up beautifully clean. You don't look like you've been up to your elbows in inks. Okay, a bit of red. That one was Candid Apple, by the way. Candid apple. You see the contamination there? Right, I'm going to leave that at that and wipe off the mat again. Right, now, this is the bit that I find really interesting. I found that the inks didn't dry very quickly. Um, also, even when they were dry, if I rub my finger over it, some of it came off. You can see the mess I'm in now, look. But toothpaste will get that off. Anyway, so what I do is I spray it to seal it with some hairspray. Here's my hairspray. It's just 
not expensive stuff, it's just the cheap stuff from the super drug of Poundland or somewhere. Now, can you see the liquid of this hairspray is diffusing those colours? Just look. Can you see? They are beautiful. Look at those colours. Oh, that was the magic bit that I found when I first did the hairspray bit. I was only doing it to try and stop it from, um, to stop it from rubbing off. But, oh, I thought it was lovely. Absolutely lovely. So there's my leaf and I'm just going to leave that to dry. And it will dry slightly shiny as well. The ink would have dried matte finished, but with the hairspray on, gives just a bit of shine it won't be quite as shiny as it looks now but it will be shinier than without any okay now the next thing i want to show you um i'm just going to get my hands a quick right here is the i found the backdrop of the corrugated cardboard um when i came to cut it to a size that i wanted I thought to myself, I don't really want absolutely straight lines coming down here. If I cut it, it would be straight. I didn't mind the straight lines at the top and the bottom, but I didn't really want absolute straight lines. I wanted it to look a little bit, you know, a little bit rustic, a little bit oldie fash. So what I did was this. Here is a piece of packaging. And this one, I may decide to use the broken bit there. In fact, I could do. Let me just, I can cut the back bit. If I cut it from the front, whoops, cut it from the front, I can see that I'm not actually cutting the, the I'm not ruining that nice rough edge there. So now I want, I don't know about, I don't mind the, the top bit, I'll cut a straight bit across the top. Don't mind that, but it's hard to rip down here, I found. So what I did was this. I got a craft knife. Oops, okay. what am I doing? Going the wrong way. Got these from um, Flying Tiger. Right, about, I know that one, I think, about there. So what I did was this. I just scored down the back of the card and then I could actually just tear it and finish up with a rough piece. If I wanted a bit more I could tear a bit more off there if I wanted. Let me just tear it. There we go. Do you see? And so it looks kind of still rustic. Now, this is quite fat, and if I want to, uh, to put the leaf onto a foam pad, I don't want to raise the, the height of the card too much. So what I did was this, just flattened it down. And those, the way it goes from one side or the other, to me, adds again to the interest. And I also wanted to just lift the tops of these visually, not literally. So I used a little gilding wax this is from pebio pibio whatever you call it and it's called empire gold and to me um, the, the the thought of gilding wax and corrugated cardboard <laughs> don't go together but i actually quite like it it just highlights these these lines and that's plenty i put a little bit on the mat first because if i put it straight onto here I probably have a great lump on my finger which would transfer to the card and wouldn't look brilliant so there we go there's my um, mount for the leaf now we're working backwards down towards the card um if i had any sense i probably would have done the background first before i got inky fingers but in the ordinary way if i'm just doing it by myself i can pop along to the bathroom and just give myself a good wash but for the minute i'll just use look there we go. Right, next thing is the stenciling here. Now, the reason I have got a panel on the front, partly because I wasn't going to start with the panel, 
but I um, put that stenciling too far to the right um, and not enough of it showed. So underneath this panel is my first attempt. So we have a panel um, just to cover up what I did wrong, really. But having learned my lesson, I then could put it in a, in a position that I wanted. What I used was this Tim Holtz um, stencil. Um, and I'm going to put a panel again because I always feel that even if it's stuck flat to the card, which is I have done because the corrugated cardboard is quite fat, I didn't want to add any more to the depth of the card. Um, it does draw your eye into the image. So I'm going to put this just over the side of the card here. And the colour I used for that stenciling, which I thought would complement the cardboard well, is pumice stone. It's a really, it looks grey, very grey on the um, pad. But I didn't catch that. Could you try again? No, I couldn't. Just go away. Good grief. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, thank you, Mr. Siri. I don't need you <laughs> any more today. Thank you. Where was I? Oh, we just get in the way sometimes. This is my chart for Distress Oxide inks. And here is pumice stone. I've just made a new one because um, I had a couple of colours to add. The Uncharted Mariner. And I'm still, it's in the post, my lumberjack plaid, which hasn't arrived yet. So I like to look at this. I have my colours arranged in colour families so I can see what colour I would like to go with what. And I thought that the pumice stone would go well, which is why I chose it. So there we go. I had to rearrange that yesterday to add those two extra colours. First time I started to do it is this side. I realised I've got two evergreen boughs and no... Um, broken china <laughs> so I did it again did it on the back so here we go holding that stencil very still knowing that I want the left hand side of the area you can always put it back and if you, if you tape it down you could always use that as a hinge and lift it up and flop it back down again at will, but it's it's easy enough to just uh, move this one. Okay, that should be plenty. So there's my bit of um, stenciling. I can put my thing on there. This is still wet, of course, but it, it would be dry soon. That would go on top like that. And then I just did a simple sentiment. The ones I used are from this set by Avery L. It's got lots of lovely, it's called Simple Sentiments. It's got lots of um, very useful phrases for um, cards. So all I need to do now is to stamp whatever greeting I want really on this card and add the sentiment and we're home and dry. So there we are, a simple card with a few interesting little twists here and there. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much.